Welcome to the EMEA Recruitment Podcast in partnership with Operation Smile. We're raising vital funds and awareness for Operation Smile to continue delivering life-changing surgery to children around the world with cleft lip and palate. To support us in our mission of creating 100 new smiles, please visit emearecruitment.com forward slash operation dash smile. In this episode, we speak to Stefan Gebauer, CFO International at Elanco. He discusses how business partners can create value through the possibilities of the organization. So hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of the EMEA Recruitment Podcast in partnership with our good friends over at Operation Smile. Uh, as my colleague Rose has mentioned, we're delighted to welcome Stefan onto the show today. So hopefully you can still hear me OK, Stefan. Yes, I can. Thank you, Paul. Perfect. Yeah, as I say, really nice to, to speak to you today. We've got a good range of questions to, to go through. Some have come internally from EMEA, some externally from our, our network. So we're hoping for a very uh, interesting discussion. So no, no pressure on you today, but uh, yeah, that's it. We're a good, a good chat today. <laughs> sure, I know. Looking forward to it. Thanks for the invitation. Excellent, excellent. Uh, well, I, as I mentioned, we... we we partner with Operation Smile. It's a charity that helps children in developing countries who are born with cleft lip and palate uh, situations. In fact, our, one of our colleagues is actually running the London Marathon this weekend to raise uh, awareness and funds uh, for the cause. So uh, I know it's very uh, dark and miserable in the UK this week, so uh, I don't envy him, him doing that. But I, but I thought I'd just ask you, given we've got this link and, and there's a nice way to to start the show, um, what what was the last thing that made you smile, Stefan? Yeah, uh, well, I mean that's that's an easy question. Um, it's it's going to be my kids for sure. Uh, I have three of them. Uh, they are ages two to twelve. So most of the time, when I when I smile, one of them got involved. Um, but also, I think yeah, there's a lot of other other opportunities to smile. So this week, um, actually, uh, I've been preparing for, for a workshop I will have with my team uh, next week for our annual talent review and, and succession management. Uh, so that's when we, um, you know, when we talk about the talents we have across our financial organization and and the key roles we have to fill in the pipeline. Um, and, and yeah, so that's that's really the people management discussions, you know, um, are, are part of my role that I enjoy very much. And, and so I've been smiling a lot this week as I was preparing for that. No, that's, that's interesting. You two two extremes. One one looking after uh, three children, two to twelve years old, and then the other one trying to look after a, a slightly older uh, a generation of people with the talents coming into the team. So, uh, but, but both uh, both using your your management skills in different different shapes and forms. Eh? <laughs> indeed, indeed, yes. <laughs> it's quite it's quite a it's quite a stretch. It's quite a stretch sometimes, yes. Going from one to the other. But both both, both very enjoyable, yes. No, no, I mean I was gonna ask you, I mean I suppose when people are listening to a show like this and they're they're looking at somebody like yourself who's international CFO, had a, a great career which we'll, we'll talk about a bit later on. One of the, the challenges I think that everybody has is is managing the demands of, of work with the demands of things outside of work. And you mentioned three, three children, you know, that that's awesome to have, have kids, but we all know uh, the challenges they bring to time on, on the day and getting that, 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 uh, uh, that situation right. So I kind of was going to ask you, in terms of how you, you plan and, and prioritize things, what, what, what does, a, I suppose, a typical working day look like for you? Yeah. But also, yeah. how do you... How do you manage that, really? Well, I mean, um, first of all, I have to say that I'm in the lucky situation that I have a, a wonderful wife who is managing a lot of, uh, you know, the operations at home. Um, I think otherwise it would be much more complicated. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of a typical day, there there is not 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 really <laughs> that much of a typical day. Uh, but when I can, and and Elanco. Um, same as a lot of companies, I think, since since uh, the COVID pandemic uh, has a flexible working arrangement, you know, so 
you know, I usually come to the office, um, you know, three days a week and 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 might work the other two days from home. And that's when I'm not traveling. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I like this. It's a good mix because uh, it gives you some flexibility when when you get things at home uh, in between calls or if it's just a lunch with family in between calls. Um, but at the same time, uh, also glad to be back to the office, connect with people. Um, so, yeah, so that's. That's, I think, uh, you know, uh, a good balance. Um, and then, you know, the yeah. other thing is probably, probably in general about, you know, prioritizing uh, what 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 really matters. Uh, I think, um, you know, uh, work work can get can get overwhelming. There's always enough to do, um, and and so making sure that you're you're keeping uh, and you're ring fencing time um, for for family and for for other activities. Uh, that's also really important. Yeah. No, I mean you mentioned there, you know, that, you know, it's great. The, the, your your wife obviously is very strong, very good helping out with the the children, which allows you the the, the time to have the focus on work and uh, and so uh, obviously you mentioned earlier about the talent and the team, and, and it's good to have a strong you know, team around you to to help delegate to and, and trust, so then you can you know prioritize the things that that do you know really matter. And and, and I suppose with 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 both of these things and this conversation in general I, it's kind of hard to have this this chat without reflecting a bit on what everybody went through you know during covid i mean i think um but but rather than looking at the negatives of covid i mean is there anything positive that you took from that in terms of maybe your management style how you deal with situations how you look at life i mean anything along those lines anything positive you can take from those couple of years yeah, for sure. I mean, um, you know, I mean, one one that I already mentioned is I think that you know the, the the view now companies have on work about being a bit more flexible and not having a a five day office week as a standard. I think that's definitely a positive because I think it increases productivity in general. Um, now I think there's a right balance. Um, you know, the the, the totally remote work uh, I, I think I think also is not is not a sustainable uh, practice. Um, uh, also, also the you know um, the fact we couldn't travel that uh, you know, and not connect with people. I think that the reconnection is important, and and I've got back to traveling around international to to connect with with my team and and and, and the commercial organization and our customers as well. Um, you know, so 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 those are the things that that really um, are 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 good to be able to do again. But. Uh, at the same time, we've learned how to how to work effectively uh, on on a remote basis, and and how to even better integrate. Uh, I think the, the our personal lives and professional lives, and, and yeah, um, so that's that's for me uh, the, the key, uh, you know, positive uh, from from the COVID times. No, interesting, and I mean, I think a few times you mentioned the the travel aspect to your role and and, and meeting people in person and. And I guess the question that I was going to ask you was about the, the value of business partnering. And, and, and clearly that, that links into, obviously, relationships with people, but actually you know, meeting people face to face and uh, and building those those relationships. And I think over the, the 15 years you, you've had working with these international businesses, your one of your key strengths is the, the value you bought as, as a strong business partner. So I thought I'd just kind of... Um, explore that a bit more really and find out you know how you've done that and what has been the key to exceeding the expectations from that point of view yeah um so i mean whether 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 i've been continuously exceeding expectations i guess that's that's up for my colleagues to judge but that's certainly been my ambition and and i think that's <laughs> you know not not you know not not a not a not a secret recipe here so i can share my you know what 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 kind of my my ingredients are here of of how, how i'm trying to create value um and, and and the first thing really is actually to to understand and and, and know what creates value for the business and and for your business partners um um, and um, you know how you can how you can uh, best bring your strengths to the table to to create that value and and I think one aspect there is to 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 regularly inspect what you're actually what you're actually doing um, and 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 where the business needs are and and refocusing on those things that are going to move the needle because I think we all know um, you know as we as we think about you know what we did last week or last month uh, there are a number of things that really moved the needle and and, and others that didn't and and reflecting. On that helps as well refocus energy uh, uh, moving forward and, and increase personal productivity. Um, the second thing I think is is more about you know managing expectations as well. Uh, I think we all know you know the the impossible request uh, that you know asks for data that you don't have or or, or asks for a deadline that was yesterday. 
Um, and I think it's 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 important, you know, uh, to to really align uh, upfront with business partners and and explain what's possible and what's not. But but also always offer alternatives, not just say yeah, can't do that, but really offer alternatives and and see you know what how you can create value within what's possible and then and then deliver against that. The, the last one, and I think that one is particularly. Uh, relevant has become more relevant um, for me as well as as I stayed into the same role for a while and and also of course I've been with Alanco now for over ten years is is to continue to keep setting your bar higher for yourself right so that you don't become complacent just because you know the company you know the processes you know your role so trying to really you know get get yourself out of the comfort zone um, continuously improve seek feedback um, and 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 try out new challenges so I think. I think those really are would be the three um, uh, elements for me that that can really help continue to deliver value um, for the business and 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 for for the colleagues. Now, I think it's really interesting answer. I mean, there's there's a few things to 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 focus on there. I guess. I mean, I suppose there's, there's almost two sides to that answer, which probably isn't surprising given we're talking about a partnership. I mean, you have one side of that which is um, about other people. You know, you finding out what. Like they want from you what what they see is creating value and uh, and trying to use you, your strengths to to help uh, other individuals, which I know involves a lot of listening and uh, and working with other other and showing empathy for other individuals. And then you have the side of it which is more about you uh, personally. You know, setting the bar high for yourself, keep learning and developing, and and um, being aware of what your 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 strengths are that you can bring bring to the table. You know, so I think that there's those two sides of it, but I guess the, the, the one I want to say the two things that jump out to me are the, the, the possibly the the strengths as a as a listener, but then also I think you know taking the time to reflect and refocus and, and learn new things. There uh, seems to be the two things in, in that answer that would possibly jump out. I mean, would you say that there are two key things about you personally that are are strengths that you have? You know, someone who is good at listening and empathy, and then obviously. On the other side, someone who uh, you know is able to take time out and refocus for your own learning and development. Yeah, I think I think those are <laughs> two skills that I've been trying to develop uh, for a long time. I don't think I I was you know uh, born born uh, uh, with it and and excel at it uh, from the beginning. And it's an ongoing ongoing process. But it certainly is uh, probably what you what the journey you you need to go on. Um, you know as as you progress through through different roles and and as your your scope um, increases yeah um, particularly you know as you shift from from being a personal contributor to 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 leading teams uh, the listening skills um, and and the prioritization uh, become become absolutely critical and, and I suppose this also has a bit of an impact on your career and as well because but you you've got a very interesting background in the fact that you've you also you show a lot of loyalty to businesses and they return that with loyalty to yourself i mean you know 12 years at elanco your current business is, is a good example of that and i think in 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 the day and age we're in at the moment um it, it, it's quite rare to see um that 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 type of partnership lasting for that long you know yeah. especially with you know, maybe some of the, the younger generation coming through it is becoming less and less uh, the, the case. So, I mean, I, I was just wondering if it's worth um, highlighting uh, an area of um, maybe advice you might give to people who are a younger finance talents looking to pursue a CFO career. Would you say that that is a, a big part of your success, the fact that you, you know, you, you've been loyal to a business, you, you brought a lot of value over a long period of time rather than changing companies uh, or is there yeah. other things you would advise to uh, uh, the young talents out there looking to, to do what you've done? I think that I, you know, uh, I, I wasn't planning, uh, you know, to, to be uh, with one company uh, for for now over 15 years when I when I started back in 2007. Actually, I started with Eli Lilly, uh, which is the pharma company that Animal uh, that um, Elanco was 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 a division of, until we spun off uh, in in 2018 with an IPO, right? Um, but essentially, I've been you know with with the same company. Uh, for over 15 years, that that wasn't what I, you know, I, I, I didn't mind that, but I wasn't planning for that. Um, now, 
the, the reason probably I, 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 I stuck with the company itself is that it gave me opportunities uh, beyond what I could, what I could, uh, you know, um, imagine uh, up front. So uh, maybe, you know, a bit, bit of history there. Um, so as I, as I said, I started on, on the pharma side of the business and, and joined Elanco actually when Elanco did their first acquisition um, of, of Janssen Animal Health at the time, that was in 2011. And I helped with the integration of that business uh, in Germany at the time. And, and from there on, uh, I went on to an exciting journey of, of, of growth um, and personal growth and, and company growth, yeah, through, through also multiple uh, acquisitions to follow to, to major ones. Uh, one in 2015 was Novartis Animal Health and, and one later in 2020 was Bayer Animal Health and in the middle uh, we had our IPO, right? And, and um, through my career, I had the opportunity to, you know, actually even move around uh, uh, in different roles in different locations. So when when we acquired Janssen, I moved to Belgium. Uh, then when we acquired the Novartis Animal Health business, I moved to Switzerland. Uh, then I went to the US when the IPO came and I came back to Germany with Bayer. So I think, I mean, one of the reasons I, 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 I stay with Lanco and I really enjoy my role is, is you know, um, the opportunities uh, I, I had and, and the people uh, around me. I think those are the two the two major major reasons. And and if the chemistry uh, works out, I think, um, you know, uh, people people stay with the company. Um, now, that's that's one part about, you know, um, my 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 tenure with the company. I think the, the other question you asked is more about, you know, advice uh, on on if, if you want to be a CFO, which which, you know, is agnostic of the company in the first place. But I think my my first reaction is you know finance is a great great place to be. Um, I'm I'm obviously biased, but I, I I think that as a function, it it really offers a very uh, high level of diversity. Um, you know from from you know financial planning and analysis, being a business partner, all the way to accounting, tax, or or or, or even more more specific things like treasury or investor relations. So so there's a lot to discover there, and and um, it it really it really you know. Uh, uh, keeps you on your toes uh, over over a long period of time, and it's also the function that uh, is 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 very much connected with the business itself and 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 with management, right? So, so it gives you great insights, and and so I think that's um, that's really uh, why why I why I love um, uh, finance as as a function, and and in terms of you know becoming a CFO, I think it's about uh, the right mix of 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 hard skills and and, and soft skills. I mean, of course, it's on one end side, it's a technical role uh, in a way. So you need to know uh, your craft. You need to, you know, gain exposure. Uh, I think early on, it's good to gain exposure to different financial disciplines, different areas of the business. Uh, I've had the chance to be, um, you know, both on the manufacturing side and, and on the commercial side. I've been in, in in more technical roles and 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 in local roles and global roles. So trying to gain you know, uh, a broad exposure to the different facets of, of finance on the one hand side, uh, and then um, more on the soft side. I think a CFO, you know, as much as, as any other leader needs to, you know, uh, be able to build strong teams, to to foster engagement, to create a collaborative environment. Um, so all of those um, skills are also very important. And, and maybe the one I would point out is uh, one that is, you know, potentially a differentiator, um, when, when you want to be a, a good CFO is the ability to jump from from the big picture to the to the nitty gritty detail uh, when you have to uh, because you're going to have in in one meeting you're going to talk to senior management or to the board or even to investors and then you're going to turn around uh, in, in in your next meeting discussing a you know an operational issue in a shared service center or or an accounting uh, matter uh, related to you know a business transaction so so I think that ability to really be in the details but also be able to to articulate clearly a, a, a big picture strategy uh, that's something that not a lot of people are able to do um, very well and if you can that certainly is a differentiator hi everybody it's paul thomas here i hope that you're well and you're enjoying the podcast so far Thank you once again for your continued support listening to the podcast. I just wanted to break into the recording to talk to you about a really exciting partnership that EMEA Recruitment has along with Operation Smile. And as founder of EMEA Recruitment, it's an honor and a privilege to announce this partnership. Personally, I was born with a cleft lip and palate, so the mission of Operation Smile is something that I have a strong personal connection with. It's not an understatement to say that the dentists and surgeons that helped me were life changers. 
It's not only about the actual operations that take place, the support and care post and pre-operation are beyond value. And from personal experience, I can only say that I'd not be the confident, happy person I am today without this support. I want to help children experience the support and care and skill that I experienced on my journey and hope that we can do this along with Operation Smile. Every three minutes, a child is born with a cleft lip or cleft palate. And the mission of Operation Smile is to provide help and support to these children through providing 6,000 medical volunteers across 80 countries who are dedicated to help these children with facial conditions, most commonly cleft lip and cleft palate. More than 200,000 children are born with a cleft every year, and they are often unable to speak, eat, socialize, or even smile. However, it can take as little as 45 minutes and cost just 180 euro or 182 francs for Operation Smile to provide a child with life-changing surgery. Now in partnership with Operation Smile, EMEA Recruitment is raising valuable funds and aiming to create 100 new smiles to support the organization to provide free surgeries for children and young adults all over the world. Please help us by donating through the link in the bio or get in touch to see how your company can help get involved too. For the moment, I'll leave you to carry on listening to the rest of the podcast, but if there's anything I can do in terms of answering any questions or finding out how you can help and support EMEA recruitments and Operation Smile, then please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Thank you once again and enjoy the rest of the podcast. I mean, you, you mentioned it there, you know, it's one of those things that um, you know, being able to see the big picture and then being having the ability and uh, I suppose the willingness to also to get involved in the you know hands on detail is something that a lot of people will say they're, they're happy to do, but when the reality comes around, um, they're probably, um, yeah, it, it's a difficult combination to, to get right. Uh, I, I mean, um, is there anything you think people can do to get better at it? I mean, I suppose it, it you know, if you're mid level career and you, you know that, um, yeah, this is something you need to improve on, whether, whether it's um, yeah, seeing a big picture or, or being more hands-on. Is there anything when you look back on your career and think, well, because of what I did here and here, that, that, that has made me um, the rounded CFO where you can see the big mm-hmm. picture and you are happy to get involved in the details. Are there any kind of hints on that side at all? First of all, I mean, you, usually people don't start at, as, at the, you know, senior management level. So, so um, I think when 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 you're at a senior management level and you're not uh, able to get your hands dirty, it's probably not because you're not able to, uh, but because you maybe yeah. unlearned it or don't want to do it. Um, uh, the other way around, you know, is you know uh, a lot of a lot of people, and, and I was one of those um, in 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 the junior years. Of course, you're you know you're a personal contributor, and you could be excellent at at you know doing your job very precisely, but then you might lack opportunities to gain exposure to to senior management or or you know and 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 then it's hard to adjust uh in terms of you know understanding how how do you communicate to to uh to people that are also in the technical details and how do you communicate to management so i think probably from 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 that perspective uh, as you as you want to progress up um i think it's important to get opportunities to get exposure to to present, uh, to lead projects, and and to get exposure to, to to senior management, and to try to think about really, okay, what is important for them, um, and 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 what are details maybe that I know but that are not adding a lot of value if I'm if I'm sharing them. I think that's that's probably one thing that, in terms of also coaching people, uh, it comes back uh, frequently. No, interesting because it does relate back to what we've been talking about through the the show so far. There, there is that. Most consistent theme of um, yeah, working with, with your people, listening to the needs they have, trying to add value to the to the areas where they 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 need help, and and obviously being aware of your own uh, abilities and and um, and taking the opportunities when they they arise. You know, I mean, I think that's probably a, a good summary of the, the things we've been talking about so far. But I, I know, obviously, we've been talking a lot about your. Uh, your your career generally, but I thought I'd ask you what it feels like now to be the international CFO at Elanco. Uh, I mean, it's uh, yeah, great career to, to date. I mean, do, do you feel you've you've made it now? You're in this international CFO role. <laughs> well, I 
No, I would I would not. I mean, I made it. Um, I, what I can say, and that's 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 uh, yeah, funny enough that it, it's been actually a long time ago that when I did my own uh, career map, must be you know probably uh, almost ten years ago, uh, the role of CFO International didn't even exist because international. As an as a as a as a division didn't exist. We were operating at the time in 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 sub regions, uh, but but that was always what I said. Hey, I mean, the one role I would think is is the one that would excite me the most sometime in the future is 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 you know being CFO for a region like international because I really I really love this you know I, I, the the multitude of cultures, the diversity of of the business in the different regions, uh, working with a diverse team. Uh, you know, so that 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 always was something that I aspired to, and 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 uh, magically with the IPO, <laughs> uh, it it kind of uh, <laughs> came came true when we when we then you know decided to to split the business into US and and international. Um, so yeah, and and in terms of how it feels like, okay, I mean, it it is it is my it is my dream job. I can I can say I can say that much. Um, and and it it is uh, it is exciting would be the one word that comes to mind. Um, and and I think you know uh, also all the all the acquisitions and and projects and integrations and system implementations and all of that um, you know have just have just added to to the to the great experience. Um, you know, I, I've had, and, and now we're coming actually to to a point where um, here in the second quarter we will uh, finalize the integration of of our latest acquisition, so Bayer Animal Health, um, from a, from a systems perspective. And and you know, I'm very much looking forward to to uh, to the next stage after that, which is then more about stabilization, optimization. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I mean, you mentioned the IPO and and then the integrations you you've been involved in. I thought it'd be interesting to get some of your uh, insights into your experience and, and the, the key learnings you've had being involved in the IPO and the multiple integrations. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's actually a topic probably we could spend a few hours talking just about, you know, the, the learnings from <laughs> from from all those integrations. Um, that's, um, yeah, that's for sure. And actually, as you look at them, uh, as I look back at them and I, you know, I was at different uh, in different roles, different levels of the organization. Uh, initially, it was you know an integration at an affiliate level, then was regional, global, um, and and the challenges of each integration are a little bit uh, different as well. But you know you could boil it down to to three buckets. Um, probably the first one is business. Uh, another one is processes and systems, and the last but not least one is is people. Yeah, and and you know without going into too much detail, maybe and on, on the business side, uh, obviously you have you know you have the the, the pre-integration preparation where you do your due diligence, where you look at how you're going to you know get value out of out of a potential uh, acquisition. Um, you know the, the the synergies you can get. You know, do you have to divest products as a result of the acquisition? Uh, and then then you move quickly into the the, the, the post integration planning um, at at all levels and and you know for commercial it means looking at you know what is the the right structure uh, for the commercial organization moving forward um, how are you going to get the most out of maybe cross selling the portfolio things like that so that that's that's on the business side on on the process and system side and that's where I've been uh, you know particularly impacted or involved as as you know being in finance. Um, one big differentiator is is whether or not you're you're going to have a, a what's called a TSA a transitional service agreement with with the company you're buying you're buying um, you know a division from and and if you have one it just means that you can continue to rely on 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 that other company uh, for a period of time usually a year year and a half uh, to continue to use their systems and their uh, their their shared service centers until you have had the time to to figure out how you're going to integrate. Um, you know the the acquired business into your own uh, systems and processes, but sometimes, and, and and that was the case with with Bayer, you don't have that that luxury, and you don't have a transitional service agreement, and that means, yeah, from day one onwards, you you kind of own everything. You you, you are the one operating uh, the 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 ERP system, the shared services uh, of the other company, and that that comes with with a whole different set of challenges. Um, and then on the people front. Um, I think you know there, there is obviously you know planning for for what the organization will look like uh, after the integration, maybe you know right after and, and maybe later on. Um, uh, 
and 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 part of that is obviously realizing also some synergies, which which are always part of of these of these deals. And and a key question when when it comes to that is how how in that process are you able to to also retain talent on both sides uh, of the organization, right? Because you want to not lose uh, the best people in the transformation, and um, that requires a lot of change management and 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 also you know cultural integration um, of of the new organization. And, and another aspect also on, on the people front is, is how do you staff for the transformation? Because the one thing that's often underestimated is that you kind of have in those transformation periods two, two teams. You have the operational team that's continuing to run the business, and then you have the, the transformation team who needs to uh, you know, manage all, all the transformation, whether it's processes and systems or, or business. And, and that's a big uh, a big part of the of the success or failure of, of any integration. And you know maybe just to to double click on a couple of 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 these areas um, you know that maybe are most most relevant here for for this channel um, is one is you know talent retention. So I mentioned yeah how do you make sure that you know you get as an outcome the right people in the right roles once it's all said and done with the integration. Uh, and I think what's important is to really you know do it in the right way. Uh, find a, a fair, transparent process. Um, um, and 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 you. You have to acknowledge that you're not going to, you know, be able to make everyone happy. Um, but I think having having an open and honest communication and and share what you can share, or or even share what you cannot, like share that you cannot share certain things. And and in practice, there are many countries you can you need to be very careful um, what you what you share uh, with whom by when because there, there there are strict regulations. But I think in my experience, being open and honest with people uh, has always been you know has always paid off. Has always been the best approach, uh, even in these difficult situations. Um, and and then the other the other aspect maybe is you know on on staffing for the transformation, which is uh, you know about the, this this team that is not operational is just managing that 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 transition. Uh, and and to me, you know the the objective is in the first place no major disruption and that's always the big risk is what happens on on day 1 of the integration um you know are the systems working can you ship products can you invoice products can you pay people and and so you need to really um you know i think the key learning here is you need to find ways to attract talent onto the project team which is sometimes not so easy because you know people are a bit worried what happens after the project is over and and so you need to of, of course find ways to 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 make them comfortable that you will you know reintegrate them in the business afterwards um, and and manage that proactively as well throughout the project. Uh, and then the other is um, the other advice I would give is always overstaff because there's always going to be so many things that you don't know that you didn't know. Um, that you know initially uh, for transformation projects I would always overstaff and then um, you know the second step would be planning for productivity in the future. Yeah. So yeah. Sorry. I, I mean you you feel like that's a topic that you know I'm I'm quite. Uh, <laughs> Uh, fund off and have been have been you know yeah it's it's been it's been the story of my of my life for the for the past few years so yeah I could I could go on talking a lot about it but, yeah no I'm sitting here trying to summarize uh, two years in in a two minutes answer you know so it's always going to be uh, always going to be a difficult a difficult one but you can tell also that I mean it's linking a bit of what you were talking about in the answer to the last question as well you you can kind of tell there is a a level of excitement when you're talking about this, you know, and, and, and I think that, that that's where, you know, it's always nice to hear, you know, I mean, I think you know, there's so many people out there who are in jobs, in projects that they, they don't find that exciting, you know, they're where the days really drag or, or that they're, they're not, they're unhappy in, in their roles. Whereas with yourself, with you, with just the way you're talking about this, you can tell there's a, you know, there's a, a good match for you with the role. There's a lot of excitement. You're you're, you're learning. You're working with people you you respect. You good relationships there, and and you you've, you've got everything really well well aligned, or at least that, that's yes. the way it feels. Anyway, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it, absolutely. It, it absolutely. sounds it sounds very very good on on that side. Of it. Yeah, <laughs> and I think the other thing that that I that, that I think that has come come from this as well, uh, you know, you, you kind of you mentioned that, um, or, or you 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 seem to have a very um, organised mindset, if if you like. I mean, I don't know whether this is something that you're aware of about yourself, but in terms of the way you you look at uh, challenges, look at um, situations, and for example, having a a career map, um, you know, breaking down the IPO into the the three different sections, you know, having uh, time to, to take a bit of time out, refocus on what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. these things are things that I think uh, a lot of people would 
you know, really like to, to to have about them as a person, but uh, you know, a lot of people find it quite difficult to you know spot in into place. So you you seem a very um, kind of uh, almost analyst or thoughtful person. I mean, would you yeah. would you say that that's that's right? Yeah, probably probably it is. Um, I don't know if you know insights. Uh, insights profiles, or I mean, there are probably multiple, multiple different, uh, you know, um, uh, tools out there to to kind of put yourself into into a sort of a category of of what type you are, right? And yeah, I mean, I I clearly have have a lot of in, in insights wording. It's a lot of blue energy uh, uh, in me in terms of in terms of the analytical part. But um, yeah, I think that's you know when I was saying earlier the the juggling between the the details and and the bigger picture, I think, you know, the, the analytical part is what what can, you know, drag me in the details. And then I think I also, um, you know, uh, try to get it then back and boil it down to 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 the to the few key things to to remember. Uh, it's also, you know, just how I how I am able to uh, remember or process things for myself. So so I think it's always a helpful exercise to to do and and, and really try to to summarize things in, a, in an elevator speech type uh summary right yeah well that's it and i thought you know the, the last question i was going to ask you and, and it, it is not a surprise but on the recruitment podcast relating this to talents i mean you've mentioned it a few times in the show already as well but I, I, you mentioned obviously it's something you've been heavily involved in over the years you know bringing people in and, and, and trying to to retain them i mean what are some of the key challenges you, you yeah. you've seen uh in in doing this and the opportunities that, that come around as a result of it really yeah that's a good question and, and i think actually the answer the answer will always depend a little bit on well one the company uh you know it's different if if you're maybe a, a google uh, or, or another well-known brand and, and people are kind of you know applying applying without you even posting a role um or or if you're a bit less known company uh it, it might also depend if you're hiring for a headquarter role or or you know a shared service center role where where you have a different dynamic i think in in the case of you know if i look at international finance uh we we have you know over 30 affiliates um and and in each affiliate you have a you have a finance team, but it's, it's obviously a quite lean structure, and 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 so you know you don't have necessarily locally uh, a visible next two three career steps ahead of you, um, and and that's really a topic that my team and I have been you know wrestling with, and and how do we you know how do we manage that? And and there's no there's no silver bullet uh, obviously to solve that, um, but I think there's there's probably you know um, you know a few a few things to 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 make sure you have in place, and and one is and I I was mentioning that coincidentally we're going to have our our annual review uh, next week is it's kind of you know your talent assessment and succession management process really to make sure that uh, well you have a robust process to to identify talent and to create visibility around it um, and 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 uh, really have have uh, a way to to then match as well the roles the critical roles that you have in your organization with with your talent pipeline uh, i think just the fact to have a process uh, and 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 people knowing that there is a process uh, is is a plus as opposed to you know uh, people feeling that maybe things are happening by chance or or might not happen at all um the second the second thing um, that goes hand in hand with that is is you know having a regular dialogue uh with with employees and particularly with talents on their career map, on their on their development plans, uh, you know, and and making sure that I mean they they own it ultimately. Everybody owns their own development, um, but I think have, making time for those conversations um, and and really making sure that that you're you're building the pipeline from a company perspective uh, for the roles of the future and 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 for them, you know, offering offering opportunities to progress within the company. Um, that's that's the second one. And then I think in in our case, because of you know the limited maybe local uh, opportunities we may have in in in, in particular in smaller affiliates, you, you need to also think a bit out of the box. Um, you know, uh, can you can you have some projects that that people can run um, on an interim basis to get them out of their day to day job to to develop them on a on a particular skill set or give them exposure to 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 a particular um, function or management uh, member. Um, short-term assignments, you know, um, that we do if if people have at least temporary uh, uh, mobility, uh, or or even you know global roles um, that you know don't have to be located in a particular place uh, that could be done by talent around the world. Um, so yeah, we're trying to 
to really, you know, uh, also think about these type of opportunities uh, and 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 include those in the career maps of of our people. But again, I mean, no, no matter how how well you plan that and you try to do that, you're going to always uh, have some regrettable losses, um, and 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 also you're going to have some roles that you will not be able to fill uh, internally. And I guess that's when you guys come in, right? Uh, that's when you need. A partner that can that can bring in that can bring in uh, yeah new 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 fresh talent from from the outside and that's I think also a good thing huh? I mean you need a, a good mix of internal talent internal promotions and and fresh ideas from 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 the outside. No, no, it's really interesting to, to hear your your thoughts on it. So I mean, as you say, having that uh, you know that that process uh, helping people with the the career map and, and uh, trying to to bring the right people in for the immediate need, but also thinking a few steps ahead uh, for, for needs uh, that, that will come up in the future. I, I mean, certainly, you know, it's always something that we're, we're talking to, to our, our clients about, but I think especially over COVID, it became even more of a conversation because uh, of the limitations uh, that were obviously there in terms of hiring budgets, but also I think, Thinking about what was around the corner, and, and I think you know, making sure that um, there was still a, a pipeline, you know, coming yeah. through because you, nobody really knew the time scales and when things were going to get back to any degree of normality, and then what needs they were going to have. So you didn't want to have to sort of start from scratch, you know, uh, yeah. and, and, and be under pressure and, and have all the competition from other companies as well. But uh, you know, but I, but I think it, do, do you, because I know it's obviously a part of your role. I mean, is it part of the role that you enjoy as well? Because uh, say you. Yeah, there's a lot of the role that you've talked about that you really enjoy and find exciting. But I, I know some CFOs who love recruitment, so I know also know plenty who would uh, rather it was uh, delegated to other areas. I mean, is it is it a part of the role you you enjoy? Yeah, I mean, I, I would not just limit it to recruitment, but I think the whole you know people strategy, people management, and development that that that's uh, actually yeah uh, really a part of the role I enjoy, I enjoy next to next to driving the business and the PNL. Um, I think these are the two the two elements I, I would I would say I enjoy the most, um, and and yeah, it's I think it's broader than recruitment. I think recruitment is part of the process, um, uh, but again, it's 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 a whole it's a whole process from um, you know um, identifying talent, developing talent, uh, building career paths, trying to make things match, trying to make things work both for the company and and for the people. I mean, that's the ideal rewarding situation, right? When 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 you happen to have that perfect match of of the right person at the right time with the right role it doesn't doesn't happen every day uh, but it's very rewarding when it does um and and yes i mean the the recruiting part again is is when you, when you then have to go external uh i mean it's also always a a, a very a very interesting uh, experience and that's when you when, when you start to have as well you know that that external look and and particularly when you then start to onboard the person and and you know uh, that's when you also then i i had you know of the past two years actually not last year it was the year before um i had three roles on on my direct team uh that we actually hired externally and it's it's been really uh you know refreshing i was also in a, in a way that you know people were starting to ask questions uh, that hadn't been asked for a while um and 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 so you 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 get new perspectives and 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 ideas uh so yeah no really um yeah as you can tell i i i enjoy that <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. No, good so I, mean, I think it's as you say i mean it's uh Important part, not not just talking about recruitment, but but the, the strategic side of it, the plans and making sure that uh, you're you're looking at the structure of the, the team in in the future. You know, I think it's uh, all all links together as as a responsibility of uh, of the international CFO role. And I think you know, I, I was going to say it's been it's been amazing speaking to you today, Stefan. I know I've taken a lot from the call, but I know that the network will really take a lot from this as well i mean as as we mentioned in the in the interview the the reflective mindsets the the you know um yeah some pushing yourself out of the comfort zone learning new things uh, um you know the, the 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 travel the business partnering there's, there's so many parts of the conversation that i know um yeah the the, the network are going to take a lot from and and i guess you know one thing is pushing yourself out push, pushing yourself out of the comfort zone and taking a few risks here and there you could even throw 
being a guest on the EMEA Recruitment Podcast into that. So you're already on to a, uh, a, good, a good start to your day in, in doing something new and, uh, and, and uh, yeah, pushing out the comfort zone, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, th- 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 thanks a lot. Yeah, it's been, I really enjoyed the conversation as well. It's been great. No, awesome. No, that's great. Uh, well, no, it's great. It's great to speak to you, as I say. I mean, if any of the network wants to connect with you, is, is LinkedIn the best way to do that? Yes, stuff? sure. Yes, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Feel free to reach out. Perfect. So we'll put a link to your uh, profile on the, the podcast promotion and then people yeah. can reach out to you directly from that side. So it's, uh, yeah, once again, huge thanks and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the day. I know you're very busy. So uh, yeah, great to get this time with you and, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll be in touch again soon. Yeah. Thank you very much, Paul. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good day. Thanks, Stefan. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to today's podcast episode. If you'd like to reach out to Paul or myself, please feel free to send a connection through on LinkedIn. And if you'd like to listen to previous episodes of the podcast, you can find them all at our website, www.emearecruitment.eu.